Gentlemen Sports Talk Worldwide with some news from the world of boxing. So y'all know what time it is. You ain't in a rush to get concussed. Now I ain't talked about boxing in a day or two. Man, women is going on. I well, got other things to do, you know? And when we get back to boxing, it's the same old rigmarole. And I like that right now because it's a rigmarole, right? Because it is. Let's, you know, um, talk about, you know, two of the best pound for pound fighters out there, right? Vasil Lomachenko and Guillermo Rigondeaux, right? We've talked about it several times, and Guillermo Rigondeaux has been aggressively calling him out. And Guillermo Rigondeaux was at 122, Lomachenko was at 130 presently. And uh, they should have fought at 126, a little catch weight for everybody, four pounds up and down. Everybody's comfortable. Uh, Lomachenko didn't want to do that. So Rigondeaux called his bluff and said at 130, and Rigondeaux will come all the way up from 122 to 130 to fight him. And the fight still can't happen, right? That's where we are. That's just up to speed. Well, you know, things have been going on lately, and I just kind of, you know, peeped it out a little bit and, uh, you know, checked out my Wimbledon in the meantime, knowing that it's going to happen just like it always does. And what you have now is, because Guillermo Rigondeaux was calling them out very actively and aggressively, uh, they had a talk a few days ago over Twitter, is what I'm hearing, right? I don't I would have no idea, but that's what you're hearing. They had a little Twitter, and they talked about each other and said they will fight in the future, and everybody's happy. Right? When I heard that, the first thing I'm thinking is, I don't buy it. Me personally. Everyone out there can buy it. Right? If you want to. I don't buy that. The, 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 we talk to each other in this cool thing. Right? This fight could have happened now. Right? Vasil Lomachenko fighting Mariaga. Really? Right? Uh, and your boy, uh, Guillermo Rigondeaux, has to have this rematch with Flores. Right? Which we all know what's going to happen there. Uh, this fight could happen now. That's what Rudin guy was saying. He's going to come up to 130. And so they're going to talk. For me, that's just damage control. Hey, dude, stop making so much noise. People are starting to hear you. You're about to mess up my first fight on premiere on ESPN. So we're going to go with the, the narrative of we're going to fight soon and eventually, like they all got all this time. Right? Rudin Dow, they still have been getting fights the last couple of years. Now he's about 34, 34, 35 years old and little. Age a little bit quicker. All right? So, No. No talks. So I don't fall for the, the talk thing, right? We could have had it happen right now. You having uh, Terrence Crawford and Julius Ndungo would have been perfect to have this right after that on ESPN. Welcome to ESPN Free TV. But we're going to fight a guy who, for you guys, Lomachenko fans, this guy is moving up and coming off a loss. Now, let's make sure this is clear about Lomachenko. <clears throat> Dude is a bad boy. We understand that. But what happens is these ridiculous superlatives after nine fights, right? When you do that, you put a target on the man. You know, some people, Teddy Atlas, <clears throat> you know, are saying he's the best pound for pound fighter after nine fights, which is normally black, blasphemous, right? You just don't do that as disrespect to the other fighters who have been fighting longer. This is not a uh, progression, you know, or what we will see, you know, one day he will be, or he has the p potential to become. Those are things you could say. But right now, the top pound for pound fighter, then we have to hold him to that standard. Do you understand? You know, remember, people were outraged at the 39-year-old Floyd Mayweather for fighting a two-time champion and Andre Berno. Outraged to almost about to boycott a fight. The man, the man was about to retire at 39 years old. We got a prime dude who is just refuses to get with this guy that's way smaller than him. Right? So we cannot... Leave him on the power power list. He has to disappear from there. Right? So he's hungry. Let me tell you what I mean. Right? Let me just give you an example. He said, and I'm quoting, no, I'm not gonna quote him, but he says, I don't need Rigo. Rigo's calling me out. This is what Lomachenko says. After nine fights, you're just telling people who you don't need already. That sounds like entitlement to me. You understand? I don't think he thought that when he got here from the, from uh, Ukraine. But he's seen the market. They're telling him, you know, these things, giving him these accolades after nine, ten fights. And then he's like, oh, yeah, OK, I guess I am. Right. I don't need Rigondeaux, a two time Olympic gold medalist. He's got the same accolades, the same uh, uh, medals as you in the amateurs, decorated as you, you know, got people running from him down there. You would want to have him. On your ledger, you would want to. The pound for pound guy, the best in the business, would want to have that. That would be a walk in the park for him. A guy two weight classes lower than him, 
calling him out actively, that's a day in the park for a pound for pound best fighter on the planet. Imagine that for, for the other ones that are up there, right? Imagine somebody calling Andre Ward up like that, two pound, two weight divisions lower, or Terrence Crawford, two weight divisions lower. Let me give you an example of what Loma said about Terrence Crawford, who's only two weight divisions above him. You're like, well, that's suicide. You see what I'm saying? It's suicide. So is it suicide for Rivendell to go up two weight divisions to fight Lomachenko? Well, if it is, he's willing to do that. You feel me, right? So that's the only reason that Lomachenko is getting a little flat for fighting a Mar uh, Mariaga or something like that. It's only because of what you guys are calling him. Just let him be a good fighter and keep him out of the top 10 pound for pound if you want him to stay hungry. You can't just give it to people just because they're fighting on your station. That's where the problem comes in. Most people are uh, hating on Lomachenko or well, nothing from the Ukraine because, like, we all say, well, now we all meet. Ukraine bring the pain. It's a whole lot. Uzak? You killing me? Post them? The glitch goes? Whole kind of bunch of stuff going on over there, right? I bet you Lomachenko couldn't even get away with this over there because you know, Ukraine is not desperate for fighters. They know they got them. So they'll be like, no, dude, you fight this dude, you know, who, who's calling you out. But in America, you're going to get away with it. Because they ain't going to try to make you ignore rigging down. So he does not need people after nine fights because he's entitled. And here's another thing. Uh, rigging down is asking for too much money and stuff. But who, who, who decides who, who's supposed to get the most money? Who has accomplished more? You know what I mean? So it's like we're just basically saying, rigging down, you don't deserve as much money as Lomachenko. Now, why wouldn't that be? Is there anything that happens in the boxing ring to why that would be? Is anybody way better than the other one? Anybody's amateur career better than the other one? Anybody's resume better than the other one? Because I know somebody ain't got no Donaire on there. Now, I know we'll take Gary Russell Jr., bad boy. Bad boy. But Donaire was about to be heralded as the next best thing, right? You don't go back and watch it. And way bigger than him again. Another thing, too. Just way bigger than him. Not even, don't look, look, look ridiculous. You know, look at the Jack the Beanstalk. David and Goliath, or oh, whatever you can think of big and small people. It's ridiculous. So, my point about that conversation that they had, for me personally, bogus. I, I, don't, I, don't, uh, I don't fall for that. I think that it's just a, a smoke screen. At the end of the day, the fight could have happened now in August or September, right? It doesn't need to be for whatever and be comfortable for one person. And here's another thing that I would prefer, me personally. I would prefer number Chico to not only accept the fight, but to say, I don't want no advantages. We're meeting at 126. Well, we both, you know, you move up four, I move down four. I haven't been gone from 126 so long that I can't make it, but I'm, I'm repeating myself. But those who have seen it for the first time, that's what you would want, right? This reminds me of things, you know, it's like sometimes these fighters who we, you know, label, and I ain't going to say we again, this ain't French, no, we don't. Some, some people label as the best ever, the most avoid, avoided, you know, you, people are trying to say he's the greatest ever of all time or, or could possibly be so, right, about Lomachenko. And he's the best pound for pound fighter right now, uh, according to Teddy Atlas and others, right, and others. So if that's the case, then you got you to gotta act accordingly. You have to act accordingly. Or we got to stop naming these guys. You know, just let them fight. Just, you know, they're good fighters until they really do something of sorts. Because you're taking L's like that. You're putting people pressure on people that don't need to be there. And then, you know, you try to label someone else so people can defer from those guys. And don't have to ever fight them because these guys are this or these guys are that. Well, these guys most of the time are undefeated and good. And here's another thing for those who just watched this for the first time. Guys, when you're watching fighting... And someone says, oh, that fighter's boring. Say it again. If they call him boring, go look at him. Because he's not going to be good. He's going to be great. That's a guarantee. Don't sports talk. Worldwide. And I'm about to hit y'all.